Well, neuromyelitis optica is an inflammatory demyelinating central nervous system disorder that typically affects the optic nerves in the spinal cord. Um, uh, its uh, name is neuromyelitis optica. Uh, previous names that it's have been used to describe it have been Devix disease, and in Asia it was considered optic spinal MS. There's been a dramatic advance uh, in this field uh, since the discovery at Mayo Clinic by Dr. Van der Lennen of uh, an antibody that targets a water channel on astrocytes, and that antibody is called aquaporin-4 antibody, or its older name was NMOIgG. And the discovery of that antibody really uh, created a seismic shift in the way we think about central nervous system demyelinating diseases, the most common of which is multiple cirrhosis. But research in the last uh, 10 years has really defined this entity as being a separate entity for multiple cirrhosis. Uh, and actually, the spectrum of the disorder, which traditionally was restricted to the optic nerves and the spinal cord, has really evolved into what we now call NMO spectrum disorders. Uh, and what we know now is that uh, these patients uh, have a disorder uh, which is due to a targeted attack of the water channel on astrocytes by this antibody. Um, but the spectrum of the disorder is much more broad now, and we see patients that have single episode of optic neuritis or recurrent optic neuritis that are positive for the antibody, and those patients are considered NMO spectrum disorder. And then we have patients with single episode transverse myelitis or uh, recurrent transverse myelitis that are positive for the antibody, and those patients also are NMO spectrum disorder. And why is it important early on? Uh, well, if you have a single episode of an optic neuritis or you have a single episode of transverse myelitis and you're seropositive, we know that that seropositivity for the aquaporin-4 antibody, it predicts the likelihood that you're going to have another attack of either optic neuritis or transverse myelitis in the following year. And therefore, very early in the course of their disease, we can make the correct diagnosis and initiate an attack preventive therapy. Because unlike MS, this disease uh, uh, is associated with disability, but that disability is based on the specific attacks rather than a progressive phase of the illness, which is the main cause of disability in multiple cirrhosis. So if we can stop the attacks, we can stop the disability. And so early diagnosis is really, really important in terms of benefiting patients. Since making the diagnosis early is so important, we really need to have uh, optimized assays, assays that are highly sensitive but also specific. Um, this is important because neuromyelitis optica and its spectrum of disorders uh, have very similar clinical uh, ra and radiologic characteristics to multiple cirrhosis, but the two diseases are treated very differently. For example, the dr drugs that are characteristically used for multiple cirrhosis, we think actually make neuromyelitis optica worse. So the importance of having a test that not only is very sensitive at detecting the antibody, but also is very specific so that we're not misdiagnosing patients with the disease or missing the disease, I think is, is very important. And that's uh, the benefits of this new assay that's been developed at Mayo Clinic. Uh, it has improved sensitivity and improved specificity and thus is uh, going to be uh, of great benefit to clinicians who oftentimes have difficulty distinguishing uh, these diseases at the very early stage. And from the studies that we've done at Mayo Clinic, uh, in terms of sensitivity, um, uh, first of all it depends on the population you're looking at. But uh, if you look at patients with neuromyelitis optica, um, then the indirect immunofluorescence assay, which was the uh, original assay we offered at Mayo, uh, that's about 50 to 55 percent sensitive. Uh, and this was superseded by the ELISA assay, which is about 60 uh, to 65 percent sensitive. Um, uh, in the studies that we did with our collaborators and also studies that we've just recently completed here, uh, we found that the cell-based assay that we're going to be offering now uh, is actually about 70 to 75 percent sensitive. So there's a significant improvement in our sensitivity. Uh, but in addition to sensitivity, we also need to think about specificity. Um, and we've also found uh, that the cell-based assay also appears to be more specific. Um, for example, the likelihood, at least in our studies so far, the likelihood of having a false positive result with ELISA is about 20 times that of uh, 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 when compared to the cell-based assay. And, and this has significant implications because um, a false positive result potentially can have devastating consequences for a patient uh, 
for example, if a patient has an episode of optic neuritis or transverse myelitis, or the clinician is unsure as to whether the patient has MS or neuromyelitis optica, the presence of a false positive result essentially might result in the patient being put on long-term immunosuppressant medications rather than no medication or an appropriate multiple cirrhosis medication. And so uh, as we go forward, and I think it's still a fast-moving train in terms of the best assay and what assays will we be using in the future, but sensitivity is important, but specificity is equally important.